Welcome to September's Leak Code Challenge. Today's problem is majority element two. Given an integer array of sides n, find all elements that appear more than n divided by three times. Note the algorithm should run in linear time and in O of one space. So this note is what turns this question from an easy to a medium hard. But let's start with the easy solution. Say we just can ignore the space constraint. How will we solve this? Well, it's simple, right? All we do is get the length of nums uh, with that an n, and we could use a counter object that's going to count up all the times each integer shows up, and we'll just go through that and say for integer number of times it appears in c dot items, if the number is greater than n divided by three, then add that to our output, and we can just return a list using list comprehension like that. So does this work? Well, uh, it looks like that gets accepted. So there we go. It's easy, right? But this is not O of one space. This is O of n space, actually, because we use uh, memory to store the number of times each integer appears. So how could we turn this into an O of one solution? Well, there is an algorithm that we could use. Um, I believe it was called the Moyer Bohr algorithm, and uh, basically what we do is go through our list and select a candidate. So we start by initializing a candidate, candidate, and we'll say whatever the first number is, this is our candidate. Now for the next number, if it's the same, we increase our counter, and we say yes, this is our majority candidate, and we continue that until the point that we find that it's a different candidate. If the different candidate, um, then we decrease our count, and we say well actually this number. Um, is not, you know, it's one less from the number of complete in the list. And mm -hmm. up to the point the count equals zero, when count equals zero, then we switch our candidate. Say we find a different candidate and our count is zero. Then we say, okay, this is going to be our candidate. And let's see if this one has the majority. And that actually does end up selecting the majority element. It doesn't count, it doesn't store how much uh, count there is, but it does store the candidate for which one is the majority appearing one. And we could actually do that for two numbers as well. One of the things you realize is with this n divided by three constraint, at most, there's only going to be two elements. And that makes sense because if it needs to appear more than n divided by three times, it has to appear more, not equal to, then at most, there's going to be two guys, right? There's going to be two people that appear more, um, most. So to do this, let's initialize a couple of variables, count one, count two, candidate one, candidate two. These are going to start with zero and candidates at first are going to be none. So the first thing is, well, if not nums, which we'll return an empty list and we'll go through our uh, list of integers. So we'll say for n in nums, we're going to first check, hey, if candidate one equals the n, then let's increase our counter for this candidate. If candidate two is equal to n, because we can store two candidates, we will increase our count by one. Otherwise, we say if count of one equals zero, then select the new candidate. We'll say, hey, candidate one will equal n, and we'll increase our count by one. Else, if count two equals zero, hey, select a new candidate for count two, or candidate two, and increase our count by one. Otherwise, if it's anything else, we have counts for both of them. We'll just decrease our counts uh, because the next, this candidate is not either one of these. So we have to just decrease until the point that they become zero. So at the end here, we should have two candidates that are actually gonna be the two ones that appear most. But we don't have the count, right? Do they appear more than n divided by three times? Well, so we'll just have to go through the list again to make sure that's the case. We'll say, all right, for our candidate in, let's say, our candidate one, candidate two, we'll say if nums.count of C is greater than N divided by three, then I'll put it to our list and return that. All right, so let's see if I made any typos. It looks good. Let's see if I submit that. And there we go, accepted. And this does use O1 space. These don't count as um, space because they're just 
one single variable. So how? How neat. If we had uh, n divided by four, we could actually expand this algorithm to have like three candidates or, or, or perhaps even four. We can have as many as we want, but it's just that this thing would get larger and larger and soon it would be like illegible. So I don't know, like it really depends on how important it is to save this memory space. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.